Andrew McCart, IFL TV, I'm here in Newcastle and I'm delighted as always to be joined by Mr Sonny Edwards. Sonny, before we go on about you and talk about you and what's coming up, Ishmael Davis, your friend, you're a mentor, a manager, how happy are you, how proud of you that man tonight? Yeah, um, buzzing to be honest, I think he performed really well. Um, you and Mackenzie, everyone's giving him credit and deservedly so. I feel like Ishmael was in control throughout the whole fight, I feel like some of the rounds that may be a bit more competitive, Ishmael was at a good sort of rhythm where you were sort of working really hard to be in there but yeah the crack started showing and he got him out of there I think it was a perfect stoppage second in uh, the thoughts of Eddie Hearn at ringside um, what it needed to be for Ish what it needed to be Ish will always be in an exciting fight so he hasn't got anything else in him I'll be real and whatever you think of his boxing level you know he's got genuine high level toughness like he's a He's a physical threat and you could see that there was like, it looks like he hasn't even been in a fight and it was a little fight, he made a lot of the sh uh, shots miss though, he was riding a lot of the shots and he was picking his moments well I think. In the fourth round he tried getting his man out there quite early and as soon as he realised okay, let me slow down a bit, he listened to his corner, just took a round a bit off the gas and then picked up a nice steady tempo and seen it through until it was too much to handle and the towel and I think it was coming for a few rounds as well I personally think I, think. Right, I was going to say right decision with the towel coming in yeah definitely and I think it was probably yeah probably not too early but I think the writing was on the wall for a few rounds I think Ish looked very quite dangerous and I feel like when he was letting his shots go you could see in the round 7 round 8 it was a bit of an energy shift and Ishmael just looked quite a bit fresher when the shots were going and Ewan was taking longer and longer to start doing or thinking about anything himself. Uh, what I will say about Sonny is that Ishmael, when I'd done an interview with him at the press conference, I mentioned you and what, what you do for him and this, that, the next thing and he said nothing but praises for you and you're like that. If you're on Sonny Edwards' team, you'll fight your, your friend's corner, whether it be your, your friend, your fighter, your family, whatever it may be, you'll fight their corner. But on the flip side, if you're not on Sonny Edwards' team, then we'll all find out about it. But he said nothing but nice things about you. And uh, when you hear like a fighter that you've helped say these things about you, how does that make you feel? Yeah, I mean, it's not really what I do it for. I'll be wrong. Um, you know, you come through and you, you bring your people with you. I've always been sort of taught that. I've always been had that in my mind and now I'm in a position where you know maybe I demand a little bit of leverage in certain conversations and not only that I've proven that when I'm talking boxing I'm not deluded I'm not out of this world I understand the business I understand the game the promoters was more than happy to work with Ishmael like he did very well he was a, a, a promoter's dream tonight he was the away fighter that said yes to two opponents um, one that was being heavily avoided by all of these promoters, uh, uh, prospects, etc. Um, Ishmael said yes. Then when that fight didn't happen, he said yes to another opponent 24 hours later for five weeks notice um, as the away fighter and he sold more tickets um, to, to cover both his and opponent's purse just out of his ticket sales. So what more could I, could, no, what more could I offer as a fight? And he got in there and he had eight rounds of an exciting fight, a proper fight, a bust up. Okay, yeah, he might have got caught of a few shots here and there, but nothing that was ever even remotely worrying. He was very much in his zone, in the comfort, and he was genuinely enjoying it. You could, you could see it, that he was enjoying himself in there and um, buzzing to be a part of it. Like I said, he's, he's my friend. I don't work with fighters. I don't work for fighters that I don't truly like and truly believe in. Um, I respect boxing and I've spent my whole life for boxing, so anyone that's in the same space as me, especially as a performer, I can respect you without even having a conversation with you. Um, and you know, when what people don't know about me is, yeah, I, I manage and fighters, look after fighters, um, but I've not approached anyone, I don't sit there with contracts in the back of my pocket, etc. No, 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 no. I, fighters come to me, we talk it. At, I don't promise them anything, as Ishmael was saying in fight week. I don't promise. I see what I think we can do. We push towards that, and look, this one delivered, and probably in a way, no better way than Ishmael could ever imagine. Do you know what I mean? I'm going to put two parts to this question because it involves your brother Charlie. Now, I don't know if you were, I know you shared it and you spoke about it on Twitter. I'm not on Twitter, but I do see what you, you see on Twitter through the IFL account. But, um, so you are on Twitter then? I am on Twitter on IFL, but not me personally because I can't do all this dog shit that goes alongside it. But I'm on it every now and again. I just actually grasped myself in there, didn't I? Oh, I am on Twitter. Um, yeah, Eddie said that he wants young fighters to show them something, whether it be Ishmael, put your own on the line, don't be scared, because if, even if you lost, you can come back. And your, your brother Charlie's in that situation now where he's a former world champion, he's won a Cal Yuffie fight, he isn't getting that fight that he wanted, which is the Cal Yuffie fight. 
just to push the question, what does that mean for a fighter that's putting his own on the line and your brother as well that can get the fights that he wants? Um, well, I feel like whilst we're pushing the narrative of real fights only, preserving the card for predominantly real fights only, making sure there's at least some... Okay, they've had at least a certain amount of experience. Okay, I get home fighter. I get prospect. But we need good fights to make good cards, to make people care about the fighters. That's it. Ishmael showed it today. You and Mackenzie showed it today. I think they set the tone for fight week. They started with the, the press week. And then every other fight had like a little bit of something about it as well. And I feel like, here he is. Here's the champ. Like I was saying, I thought he set the tone for fight week. And I think he set the tone for the, the fight night. I think that was a great performance. I've called him many times, way before we've even been having this conversation about working with uh, Ishmael. Britain's best kept secret, but he's not so kept anymore. Shout out to you, Mackenzie, for being a worthy adversary. But I think Ishmael showed that he's a dangerous man in there. Everything was within his comfort zone. He looked powerful, he looked fast, he looked elusive when he wanted to be. Um, very measured for a man, bear in mind, that don't have 10 years amateur background, don't have GBs or world medals, or he doesn't have any of that. You know, he's got a lot of stories he could sit down and tell you. Probably bring a tear to your eye, but yeah, he, he, he's here and he's a proper serious fighter. I was going to ask about his brother Charlie, but since you're here anyway, I said to you at the press conference and I said, what does this man mean to you? After tonight, the victory, you've got your mom, the dad, your kids here with you. What does it mean to have everyone like Sonny with you that means everything to you right now? Listen, it means a lot, man. These are the guys, these are the reasons why I'm doing this. You know, these men show me, you know, that anything you want to, you put your mind to and if you believe in yourself, this man especially believes in himself and, you know, he's one of the best boxers in the world, I can say that. And um, he shows you, and if he believes he can do anything, and I believe him. But I'll tell you what, but lucky he's not six foot four. Imagine if Sonny Edwards was six foot four. Listen, it'd be, it's fucked. Yeah, I'd, be fucked. On, I'd be on a throne fucked. somewhere in a mountain, just like. But you know what it is. Listen, I'm I'm thankful, man. I'm grateful for everything that's going on in my life. You know, I'm grateful to show people that you know you can do what you put your mind to, and I'm happy for all the people that I've got around me. Sonny's a realist, and uh, you know he'll be my lifelong friend, and that's just how it is. We look after each other, and he's looked after me tonight. Uh, listen. Well done again, Ishmael, man. Listen, I hope this is the first of many interviews. I've done three, three with you now, but listen, let's get used to this camera in your face because it's going to be there plenty of time. Sonny, I want to talk two, two more questions, if you don't mind. Obviously, I want to talk about your fight coming up. It's just over a month away with Bam Rodriguez. But your, your, your brother Charlie, I seen that he was working with you down in Grant's Gym. Um, he's wanting that Cal Ufi fight. I've seen you being vocal on Twitter, reference that. Um, your brother Charlie, how's he looking? Is his mind right? I know he's out in, is he out in somewhere in Spain, I think, training with uh, Stephen Smith. What's going on with Charlie? Yeah, no, no, Charlie's doing good, to be honest. He's um, in a position where he's always training. He's always keeping fit. Charlie's kind of obsessive in that uh, way. He can't ever really stay out of the ring even when, I mean, at the gym, even when he's out of the ring. Um, yeah, he was out helping me with sparring. He's actually linking up with me for a couple of weeks uh, to finish off my sparring for the BAM camp and... But Charlie's always been a very good fighter. Um, what we were just talking about Vishma there, I believe in myself and I've always fully believed in myself, probably to uh, an absolute fault and uh, probably to my detriment sometimes mm. believed in myself that much and, and what I can do and bring to the table. But what it allows me to do is at least get so far, at least how far I think I can get and whilst I'm still there then start finding out and so far I've not had anyone made me really find out but you know sometimes with my brother he lets other people's opinions he like he let that override his 18 19 years hard work his 18 years experience his hundreds of amateur fights his world title fights his challenges like pretty much not looking remotely human in a boxing ring apart from against Casemiro Martinez he beat everyone beat everyone to a standstill pretty much probably a couple of rounds that was even worth talking about in his whole career like but you know you have the wrong people in your ear they steer you the wrong way they can't deliver nothing I'm glad that he's you know, we've got uh, you know come back closer together um, there's always bound to happen there's a lot of love between me and my brother um, but very competitive and I'll do anything for my brother that's what's often lost like you were saying before if they're my friend I'll do anything for him on camera off camera behind the scenes is usually where I'm fighting am I your friend Sonny? <laughs> I'm taking that as a yes. I would say a a a very good acquaintance, and I mean that in a great compliment. I'll take that. I'll take that as a compliment. Uh, let's talk about then. You know, just over a month away from your fight with Bam Rodriguez, you said that yet that nobody's found out what you 
found you out yet, so to speak, in the way you've approached the game, because you've been 100% tunnel vision, you've, your perfect record so far. Bam Rodriguez is going to be your toughest test today. For, as a, for a super flyweight, flyweight, he can bang a little bit, he's got punch in his power and he's got angles. Would you agree that he's your toughest test today? And obviously, what's going to happen on the, is it the 16th of December? What's going to happen out in Arizona? Look, I mean, is he going to be my toughest test? We'll find out December the 16th. People are telling me he is, people think he's going to be, so that's all I need, really. I know I've been in with genuine legends, not flashing the pan world champions, so um, we'll see. Uh, we'll see. I've been in a couple of real, real good fighters um, and shared the rounds with many, many, many before. Unfortunately, flyweights, they just don't skim. Uh, I've got to say, well, you beat him on the punch thing, though, didn't you? He beat you at table tennis, but on the, the punch uh, arcade thing, you had more power than him, so can we read into that, that you're going to knock Bam Rodriguez out? Well, I've been saying first round knockout, yeah. What a lot of people don't realise, yeah. It's just because I don't do something don't mean that I can't do something. So just because I get in the ring and, you know, make sure both of us get home safe to our families. You know what I mean? Shout out to Tony Belly. Um, um, no, but, I, you know what I mean? I don't, I'm not in... People say I'm in the hurt business, but I'm not really in the hurt business. I mean, I like putting on a show. You hurt people's feelings business, though, on that Twitter. Yeah, but only when they hurt mine first. I'm, and I'm very big on that. Listen, Sonny, I do appreciate your time as always. And uh, if I don't see you before the 7th to 16th, I don't think I'm going out there. Good luck, and I'll see you when you get back, man. Appreciate it, Sonny. Thank you, brother.